All right, so welcome to Been Wonderful. My name is Donnell, and today is gonna to be a good video, I think, because this is for all the folks out there who have a small or limited amount of space and you wanna make a YouTube studio. I'm gonna show you the process that I went through to turn my small bedroom into a YouTube studio space. All right, so this is the room right now. I got all this empty space over here, which right now I got this already up on the wall with some command strips, which is amazing. But I wanted to just show a little before, and then I'll show the after once I get it all situated. And this is how I edit right now on the bed. <laughs> so the first thing I had to do was I needed to get a desk and a chair. So I went to Amazon and I got a pretty cheap, I think affordable desk and chair setup. Nothing too fancy. I think it was enough for me, though I could have used a probably a little bit longer desk. Yeah, once I got that out the way, I started getting some accessories, you know, and, and if you want me to go more detail for my desk setup specifically, then I'll do a separate video on that. But what you do need to know is that with this setup, I got me a Shure MV7, which is a microphone, and I got it attached to the Rode PSA1. From what I can tell, I've been testing it out for a few weeks now, and I like the audio coming out of this, and you guys let me know what you think of it. But not every setup requires this type of audio, so there's other options, of course, you can use your built-in mic or you can use a shotgun mic and things like that. I wanted to have it there and also for voiceovers. I, I thought I needed a good mic. So in my opinion, the two most important things for your studio is having some good audio and also having some good lighting. And I'm testing out this light right now, which is the Godox ML30. Got it because of the small form factor and I got the light dome that's made by Godox because like I said, small space. So I wanted to get something that was very portable and small. And you guys are watching this right now. So you let me know what you think of this lighting arrangement. So for the camera, I'm using the Sony a7S III. Of course, you can use any camera. You don't have to use the a7S III. You can use the phone if you want to. For my particular setup, I'm using the a7S III. I put a cage on it so I can mount a couple of different accessories on there. More specifically, I have a Ninja V monitor so I can see myself a little bit better than if I was just using my little screen. So also around the studio to, to kind of help with the lighting, I just put some little lights like around and I plug this on. It's an aperture light and it's nice like a little small light and it's got like magnets on the back too so that's pretty nice. I have this Ulanzi light that's behind me that has a blue light coming off of it and that's just to bounce off the wall and, and just to cover up some of the shadows on the wall. I want to have some things going on in the background so on the walls, I have some plant, some fake plants. I thought they were a nice addition to the room, a nice minimalistic kind of look for the room. And then I have this peace sign, which is kind of a throwback to my old YouTube videos when I had a little peace sign that I used to keep in my videos. So I decided to get another one and that's gonna be in the background for the future videos. So on the wall, I have a pegboard, which is, is really for like actually storing stuff and actually putting stuff, but I think it has a nice look to it, but it's mainly so I can store stuff. And I also have another pegboard behind the scenes. I store a bunch of stuff there, like color boards and my gray card and stuff like that. These little animal bags, I thought there was a nice aesthetic to them to kind of go with the pegboards. Uh, those are good ways to kind of store some of your items and kind of get them out the way so that you can have more space to record. I ended up pushing my bed all the way over to the other side of the room and I put the nightstand right there behind me so you can still see the light from it and that can kind of give me some background light while I'm making these YouTube videos. When you're thinking about space saving, you also don't want to wreck your shit. So. <laughs> So one of the things I found super handy when I was making this YouTube setup was command strips. Prior to this setup, I've never really used command strips, so I was a little hesitant, but from what I can see, they work really well. I've had them up for a few weeks now. So far, I haven't had any issues with them. So I definitely recommend looking into command strips. Just make sure that you clean the surface properly before you put those things on the wall because you don't want to have your shit fall down on the ground. I got this little stream deck right here which is nice and I definitely want to do a video on this. So pretty much the main gist of this video is that even with the small space, you just have to maybe shift some things around, you know, make some adjustments. Like right now it's still in the testing phases. So you are going to be the judge, right? You can tell me if this works as a studio. For me, I think it's, it's so far so good. I'm, I'm pretty happy with how everything is working out for me. If you guys got something out of this, you guys get some inspiration for your YouTube setup, let me know in the comment section below. And till the next video, peace.